What's poppin' me, Anthe? Guess who's back with another video? Now your boy's sitting here having a couple of drinks. He's a little happy right now, so this is a perfect time to make one of these vids. And why do I say that? So I'm not sitting here talking like this, like that one guy from the commercials back in the day. Real monotone to you literally wanna scoop out your eardrums with a fucking melon baller. But I'm a little more happy, hyper, and you guys got jokes. I'm talking more motherfucking game than Milton Bradley, Nintendo, and Sega combined right now. Hmm. So, today's Let's Talk About It is going to be about two individual boss characters that have been one of my personal favorites for a long time. And while I was dazzled by the fact that they appeared in Symphony of the Night, I was admittedly disappointed by the battle itself. It was creative in that they teamed up together, but other than that, they were, well, well, they were the biggest pussies in all existence. I'm talking larger than something you would find on a 100 foot woman. And that's pretty damn big if you ask me. So, who we're going to talk about today is Slagra and Gaiben. Now first, let's start talking about Slagra. Slagra is actually called Berrigan in the Japanese version, which is probably a bastardization of Belligan. And the origins of his name are blah blah blah, stupid shit nobody wants to hear, blah blah blah, stuff you guys don't care about, blah blah blah, <laughs> make it stop! <laughs> no, but seriously, I did some research on his name, Slagra and Berrigan, and I'll be honest, I couldn't find much. I found a couple of pings that could have been the inspiration for his character, but uh, nothing concrete. So, I wanted to give you guys a little history lesson here, but I'm honestly too lazy to spend the night scouring Google to tell you guys about something you just don't care about. Suffice to say, he started off being referred to as a dinosaur knight thanks to a certain Nintendo guide and was one of the nastiest boss characters in Super Castlevania 4. He was one of three final bosses that came before Dracula in the final stage of Super Castlevania. I believe it was stage B. Yes, you guys heard right, stage B. The stages were actually lettered like that because in hexadecimal it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. Then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, then 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, one 1E, one 1F, one back to 2-0, and so on and so forth, ad infinitum. Uh, it was a hardware limitation. It's why those of you who decided in Super Mario Brothers would go out and, ooh, let me keep jumping on this Koopa Troopa on this staircase and get 100 lives, would notice, huh, after I hit live 9, the numbers started, the, there were no longer numbers. There were letters there, and then there was garbled trash is the only thing word I could use and oh, eventually I even died from it because oh, once I hit past a certain number it just loops back around to zero I have no lives left oh man oh, that's a bit of a bitch and, and mind you the rumor was it was 99 lives but I wouldn't be surprised if it was more like 255 you know because the thing is in byte format numbers go from zero to 255 once you're 255 it loops back around to zero and in an 8-bit system it uses what else byte so there's our nerd hour for the day. Thanks for coming, ladies and gentlemen. The rest of this video will be stupid shit you probably don't care about. If you expect to learn something here, eh, sorry to disappoint you. It's not going to happen. But seriously, Slogger, getting back on point. Um, dinosaur Knight with a spear. Not really a dinosaur knight, more of a servant of death that kind of resembles a dinosaur in the head. Not too much more to say there. Appeared in Super Castlevania, made an appearance in Symphony of the Night, Dawn of Sorrow, Curse of Darkness, Portrait of Ruin, and Harmony of Despair. And was just one of my personal favorites because in his original appearance, he was nasty. Really nasty. Like, extremely nasty. I mean, he was nasty because of the room layout and the limited controls you had over your character. But it was a nasty fight. One that it felt like sometimes, oh man, you know, I just can't win. This guy keeps charging forward with his beak. I mean, well, he had the spear, he was basically a little bitch. But when he started beaking you, yeah, that's what I'm going to call it, beaking you. Mm. It was nasty because the hitbox was just so massive and you had such little space that it was like, if you didn't kill him quickly, he would kill you. And I think the developers of the game knew this and that's why you basically have enough meat to give you full life after the fight. But nonetheless, I thought his design was really cool. He was just a personal favorite. In Symphony of the Night, they basically neutered him. They redesigned his sprite and made it look nice and pretty, but they totally neutered him and he was literally no challenge at all. You could just duck under his spear, his beak attack, and his fireball as well. His beak attack was totally useless. And his dive bomb attack, when Slogwa or when Gaiben dropped him, pardon me, was a joke. So, let's move on to his butt boy. Gaiben! 
who is name is about the same in Japanese, except there's a Y in it, and uh, I think it would be pronounced Gaiben. And he's basically a gargoyle. Enough said there. I mean, it's kind of obvious he was basically a gargoyle, and that's what he was referred to in his initial appearance in that Nintendo Guide, a gargoyle knight. And that was it. You know, there wasn't much more to say about him. He appeared in all the same games as Slagra, so, you know, exact same ones. If you find one, you find the other. I also believe he appeared in Encore of the Night. I don't believe Slagra appeared there. I'm pretty sure he didn't, which is kind of surprising. But anyway, another Servant of Death. Not really that difficult to fight in Super Castlevania. It was pretty much a joke compared to his predecessor. He was kind of like the the break between Slagra and the Death fight. I mean, his death was pretty nasty, too. In Symphony of the Night, he was definitely more of a threat than Slogger was. If you slept on him, he could do some serious damage to you, but again, the problem was his attacks were just too predictable. I mean, his pattern was too obvious. In the first part of the fight, he shoots five fireballs, lands, shoots, I think it's five fireballs again, which can be ducked, and then lather and repeat over and over. If you weren't careful, once he landed and shot those fireballs, he has a habit of flying forward, so you'd get hit due to running into him. But once you figured out that trick, he was really easy. Second part, same thing. He shoots a couple of small fireballs in the air, a single big fireball, land and shoots a bunch of big fireballs. But the thing is, all you have to do is put up your shield or cut them down. It was just a very, very anticlimactic fight, and I was very disappointed by it. I was never happy about it. For those of you who have been around since the dark ages of this engine when it was actual hack, you'll know I released a video and actually a version of the fight that I tweaked using a couple of, um, I forget what the name of the cheat device is in the PlayStation emulator, but I basically used that emulator. I think it was called PEC Cheat Emulator. I, I don't remember at the moment. But I basically used that and put up a video of the actual battle that everybody was saying, wow, that looks really hard or really crazy. But the problem was they were still limited to the same moves, basically. And it was still kind of like, well, this is a bit unbalanced. I had to limit a lot of your movement so that, you know, you couldn't get jump all really high anymore and escape, you know, Slogger and well, that's not really an issue. I cut off a big part of the room, too, because truth be told, the room was too big. But the truth was, I just never was really too happy with it. I had to use a cheap gimmick, like making it so you could only hit Slogger's spear at first, because he'd always go into his pain animation. But once I figured out how to remove that, I got rid of that gimmick. But nonetheless, it was still like, well, these guys are still pretty easy. I always felt like Slogger in particular could use some more moves. Gaiman, I felt, was pretty good, but he just didn't have much in the form of animations. I was a little disappointed with that. So, what did I go out and do? I decided to get a bunch more sprites done for them, which I'm going to be sharing with you guys in this video. Now, I originally was going to break this video up. There was going to be one for Patreon subscribers that had the new sprite animation showed in it, and one that didn't. But since I said I would put up this video in a couple of days, and it's been almost a week since the last one, I decided, fuck it. You know, let me release this to the general public. You guys could all see what's been being worked on. You could give some feedback, and we could go from there. Now, before we get into the sprites here, which I know is what everybody's looking forward to, let's talk about the logic behind the battle. Now, I wanted you to be able to fight both of them at once still, and I wanted them to be a challenge because they're no longer going to be the first boss. They're going to be, well, let me think, one, two, pretty much the fourth boss battle you have. And at this point, you'll have the ability to slide, you can single jump, you can backstep, you have a shield, you have your swords and clubs. And then you also have your second weapon set, which is spears and two-handed swords. So I had to come up with a little more to make the battle adapt to that. Because it was easy enough as is, and I didn't want it to stay that easy. So the first thing I thought about was, well, okay, I want them to have team-up attacks, but I don't want Slogger to repeatedly go into his pain animation. And I want, on the other side of things, Gaiben to have a pain animation. And I wanted it like this not to be a thing that every time you hit them, they go into their pain animation. But I want it to be a thing where if you score enough hits repeatedly on them, because anybody who's seen my Christmas video can see that you now have like ground combos and air combos you can do with your weapons. You also have strong versions of your attacks, and I wanted you to be able to use different combinations of attacks to do enough damage in a short enough time to make them go into their pain animation, and now their defense drops, they take more damage, and that's pretty much your goal here with Slogger, is to hit him enough that you can drop him to his knees and then do some real damage to him. You know, and it's the same more so with Gaiben, since your air chain is weaker than the ground chains. Um, I wanted you to have to be able to hit him enough times to knock him on the ground, and then have the opportunity to poke him a couple of times before he got back into the air. 
adding a little more depth to the game for people who wanted to speedrun or master it, a new level to master, something else to do. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could score a couple of hits, get away, defend yourself, score a couple of hits, get away, you know, whatever you want to do. You know, but the goal is to just add more depth to the combat system so it isn't just, okay, and let me see here, let's go ahead and hit this square button or this X button over and over, okay, now let me hit the... A button or you know you'll excuse me if I get the button mappings off let me hit this button over and over just to jump away and no, no, let me hit the attack button again I wanted there to be more thought to it than that okay something a little more involved that required a little more brain power and a little more combat prowess at the same time Slogger's fireball was next to useless so I'm setting that fireball up to now be something that's extremely fast I may also add some other distinctness to it I'm thinking of making it something you can't duck. Actually, I'm certain I'm going to make it something you can't duck. So if it comes flying at you from off screen, you're going to have to jump it. As for his spear, he has the ability to stab forward, diagonally upward, and straight upward. And there's an effect on the spear now so that it has much wider range. You now have to backstep away if you're on the ground. Backstepping has special properties that with physical attacks, you have a small window of invulnerability at the start of it. So if you backstep as he's spearing you, you won't get hit. Think of it similar as Devil May Cry, where if you jump as an attack's coming at you, you have a very small window of invulnerability you can utilize against attacks. Same thing here with the backstep. And that's something that always irritated me about it, is it just didn't have enough invulnerability and was just a quick way of traveling across the room. So that's first the slogger. Second is I wanted him to have an attack where he could leap at you from across the room and surprise you. So if you were keeping him off screen in an effort to maybe just kill Gaiben by himself, you have to worry about Slogger not just throwing a fireball in the air, but let's say you're on a platform, one of the platforms above him, because you know how his room is laid out, that there's platforms all over the place in the alchemy lab. Well, if you're doing that, you've got to worry about him jumping on top of your head and spearing you. He now has a jumping spear move. One will actually start for a second, he has a little bit of startup to it, but he'll then jump into the air and try to drop straight above you, downward with a spear. He still has the team up move with Gaiben, but that move's a little different than when Gaiben drops him, it also causes a wave of energy to erupt from the ground that you pretty much want to jump away from him. Actually, it's a combination of things. You want to backstep and jump, because if you jump away, you're going to get hit by him dropping, but if you backstep, it's quick enough, and you can also cancel backsteps with a jump, so you want to backstep, and then as soon as you get far enough away, jump so the energy wave on the floor doesn't hit you. Again, adding a little more depth to the combat, and at this point in the game, you would have figured out you can do that, so it's a perfect time for that. But what about without a spear? Do we want to make him so he's still crippled, that he's totally useless? Not at all. So, you're actually, the goal is, when you get further in a boss fight, for it to become more difficult, not easier. So, what I've done is I've given him a couple of new attacks. The beak attack now flies forward a good distance, and you want to jump it. Okay, you have to jump it. Backstepping won't help you. You can't slide under it or anything like that, so that won't work. He has a clawing attack that you want to backstep away from because it's very quick. Jumping won't save you here, sliding won't save you. And then he has a jumping claw swipe, which this you have to slide under. The height is enough that you can slide under it, but it's low enough that while you can't jump over it, it's high enough that you can't jump over it, but low enough that if you jump, it'll still hit you. So you have to slide under it. And again, that's making you use all your options here. Your backstep, your slide, and your jump. You can't just, okay, let me jump and dodge each attack or backstep away from every attack. That's not the way it works. Now, as for your shield, with Slogger, there's not much use for it. His spear goes right through your shield. His fireball, the shield isn't very good against it. It won't be of much use unless you learn how to perfect guard them, and that's something I'll talk about in another video. It's a planned feature, perfect guarding. With Gaiben, it's obviously much more helpful for the small fireballs. For the big ones, you're not going to want to try to block all of them because eventually your shield is going to wear down and it's going to get knocked out of your hand. So, useful, but not something you're going to be able to abuse to save your ass. Dashing, well, you're going to want to be able to position yourself properly with two enemies coming at you, so not too much to talk about there. So with that all out of the way, let's get to the content of the video that will make you want to peel your eyelids the fuck off so you could just stare at this all day every day. The new animations. So here we have the upward spear and the diagonal spear. And as you can see, these are fully fleshed out animations. You know, they're not something that's some choppy mess. No, my artist Diego did an excellent job. I want to give him a quick shout out because he did a hell of a job working on these, put a lot of effort into them, worked some late nights, etc. And as you can see, they're pretty fast. You know, I may tweak the timings a little bit later, but the truth is these are designed to be quick attacks because these are designed to be used if you're on the upper platform trying to avoid him. If you're on that platform trying to avoid him, well, the idea is he's under you harassing you. So you can't just hide on platforms anymore to get away from him. And if you do, well, then he has this attack. 
a new ground stab move. Now this move, he lets out a sound, charges up for a second, stabs the ground, and flame pillars erupt either under you or near you. I'm going to set this as two different patterns so you have to be observant. But the idea is, this is to make it so that you don't want to sit there try to just fight Gaiman by yourself. You're encouraged to get that spear out of his hands as soon as you can, and then you can kill Gaiman. So there's some kind of order to the combat. If you want to give yourself a challenge, you don't have to do that. You can sit up there try to dodge this and him stabbing at you, but that's a quick way to die, honestly. And let's not forget, he also has this sexy little jumping spear attack. And as I said, that's something that's designed to be an attack that it doesn't have the same properties as the one where Gaiman drops him. It's designed to be a quick kind of attack to catch you off guard. And your best bet here is either to back step or slide away from it. And it's also something so if you're on a platform, he can get up there too and come after you. So he's not just stuck attacking you from below. He can catch you off guard with something like this as well. And he also no longer goes into his pain animations nearly as much. So he actually has a new animation for calling Gaiman which I'm going to show you right about now. Now it isn't much, it looks a little choppy here, but the fact is this is just designed to be a quick animation where he calls Gaiman, and then he's immediately going to get into another pose, which is an already, anim an already animation that was created in the original game, so I won't show you it, where Gaiman was just going to grab him, take him up in the air, and he's going to hold his spear down in an effort to try to nail you with it, and erupt, create another of those flames around him I was talking about earlier. Now, I do need an artist to do the flame effect, so if anybody's interested in doing that, it's going to probably require somebody with Photoshop experience because I'm looking for more HD type effects. For those of you who aren't sure what I mean, look at my Christmas video near the end where I show off Dracula's flame pillar. It is Gigavolt effect. I'm looking for something like that. The enemies are going to be classic retro types of sprites, but I want most effects to look more HD and modernized. So, now let's talk about his animations without a spear. Or to word that properly, let me go ahead and show them all because I'm an absolute fucking attention to where he gets a fucking hard on from this. Ooh, what daddy likes. Say it with me now. Daddy likes. But anyway, here's his claw swipe. Jump the claw swipe. He still has got his beak move, you know. If Gaiman is somehow still alive, you know, at this time, he can still pick him up and cart him off and he can use a beak attack on you. Not quite sure how I'm going to roll with that one just yet. I'm going to make it so it's something that he kind of waves over you and drops at a random spot quickly. So you're going to have to decide whether you want to backstep or jump away. Which again, makes the fight a little harder. But at this point, it's being set up so that you probably want to be killing Gaiban. You want to break that spear and then you want to get Gaiban killed as quick as possible. Because this is pretty nasty here. But either way, point is to make the battle difficult so that even if you only have one of them alive, it's not an absolute cakewalk here. And this little animation is a rejected one. <laughs> this was actually part of the process of creating that jumping spear move you all saw. But it looked like my man was just sitting here going, go! Some kind of sports fan or some shit, I don't know. But anyway, point is, rejected animation. But I get a kick out of this goal stance here I go in initially. Artists did a great job of cleaning it up. But I think outtakes like this, they tripped me up. So I figured I'd show you guys so you could see. It's not a bad animation at all, but you'd be surprised how many things I reject because they just don't look good enough for the animation I have in mind. And last but definitely not least is new paint animation, which involves some of the old paint animation and a little bit of new stuff thrown in as well for good measure. And as you can see, there's two different variant versions depending on whether he has a spear or not. you have to excuse the color in this right side one. It's been corrected for the spear, but it wasn't done in this GIF here. Not a big deal. But... This is what I've been working on for the last week for Slagra alone and Gaiman. I think it's been about a week and three days we've been working on spriting for these guys. Um, and believe me when I say I've spent some money. I've probably spent alone in the last week and a half working on these well over $200. This is why I'm always sitting here talking about Patreon, 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 donations. Give me money, you give me money. You know, like one of these immigrant dudes that just came across the boat thinking this is the promised land. Give me money. But no, this is why I'm always talking about it, guys, because this stuff adds up really quickly, but you can see the progress that's been made. As you can see, this sprite sheet has gotten ridiculous now. This doesn't even have the new paint animation, and it'll go right here, but it's basically doubled in size. I mean, this is why I said I, my plan is to overhaul this game's sprites, to add in a lot of new stuff, make things look a lot better. And as for the enemy version of him, I can't really talk about that right now because it would make this video too long and we're going on almost... Well, I think we're going to be up to about 15 minutes at this point, maybe more. But the enemy version of him, the AI will be adjusted so that it'll still be a threat, but it'll be different because it'll just be Slogger by himself. I may set up... There's not going to be a lot of them later on in the game. You may fight one by himself. You might fight one Gaiman by himself. Then I might put another room where you fight a Slogger and a Gaiman each separately in a precarious kind of room. Instead of it being just a flat room, let's say... 
with Slock, or instead of it being a flat room where you fight him with plenty of space, maybe it's a tighter area with a couple of hazards. Same for Gyvin. The first room where you fight him as an enemy will probably be simple, followed by a second one that's a bit more hazardous. And then lastly, I would probably put a room where there's two Sloggers and then another room where there's two Gyvins. But you won't fight them as a team again. Not the boss battle versions. The enemy ones, as I said, will have their AI adjusted appropriately. Because we want to make sure that we account for any moves you're going to have when you battle them. That's a problem with the original Symphony of the Night. It doesn't account for all the moves you have. Double jumps, different weapon sets, um, different spells, different sub-weapons. All this stuff needs to be accounted for. And it takes quite a bit of work considering how I've expanded Alucard's moveset. But it's something I'm really looking forward to doing. I didn't forget about Gaiman, people. I know there's Gaiman fans out there. But here's one animation for him. It's a quick drop animation where you run under him and he drops down below, causing some dust where he lands. The dust and himself will do damage to you. And this is designed to be something because a lot of people would simply run under him as he's spitting fireballs. And this is kind of a surprise attack. He doesn't always do it, but it's something being set up to randomly happen to discourage you about just running under him. Oh, I forgot. You would have a dash by the time you fight them. So this is where this attack comes into play. It's to discourage you from trying to do that. If he's anywhere near you, you want to make sure he's pretty high up if you're going to go under him. Otherwise, you're going to want to use the platforms of the room to get around him. Pretty simple animation. Gaiman's being modified as well, so his pattern isn't so static. It's a bit more randomized now, so first part of the battle, he might shoot four fireballs. Or, yeah, four fireballs once. Then he might shoot five fireballs next time. Then he might instead shoot a three-way spread of them. Then he might drop down. It's no longer going to be shoot fireballs in air, land, shoot fireballs on ground, odd infinitum. That was just too static a pattern and made him very boring. Now, one thing that always pissed me off about the battle with Gaiban, he's a huge, muscular gargoyle demon. Obviously, three times Alucard's thickness, and he doesn't try to grab you. Why not? He's got those monstrous claws, he's got those talons, look at those muscles on him. So I gave him a physical attack. Initially, this was going to be kind of a wing smashing attack, but it was like, uh, no, the Dark Wing bat already has that, I don't really want to give him it too. So instead, I chose to do this. A simple move where he has a small amount of startup, and then we'll swoop forward, try to grab Alucard in those talons, and begin crushing him. Now, this is a move, once you get a hold of you, you have to wiggle the stick and hit the buttons to get out of it, just like the old school arcade games, before he starts crushing you and doing damage. If you don't go down quick enough, he'll score a couple of hits, but eventually he'll do a really strong crush on you that takes a chunk of your health, and you don't want that to happen. And the idea is the more times he grabs you, the harder it is to shake out of it. So, this is designed to be a pretty fast move that homes in on you and is difficult to dodge, and with Slogger running around the ground, uh, it's going to add a bit more depth to the game. You're really going to have to be aware of your surroundings. Next up on the left here, you can see where Gaiman has squashed Alucard like bulk. Yeah, that's the animation right there where he's crushing it with his talons. On the right, you can see Alucard's animation when he's in pain. You know, he also has a static animation when he's hanging here. I was going to animate it a bit more, but the fact of the matter is I'm again going to do this old school. When you're grabbed, I'm going to have him move left and right as you try to wiggle free. If not, he'll just stay in place, go into his pain animation when he's crushed, and that's it. And I'm thinking this way because a multitude of enemies and bosses are being given grab moves. So I didn't want to get too crazy with it because otherwise the spriting would take too long. And again, feature bloat. I don't want to create an animation that might be used for, well, basically him and possibly harpies and nobody else. And it's like, okay, well, we just invested a lot of money into creating 10 frames for Alucard that will only be used by two enemies in the game. Wouldn't really make sense. Got to be effective here while making sure that we don't decrease the overall quality standards I've set in place. And last but definitely not least is his pain animation. If you hit him enough times in the air, he gets knocked out of it, gets dropped on his ass. And this is perfect here because afterwards I'll have him just slowly get up and you'll have the opportunity to score a couple of hits on him. And last but not least, we have this pose that is my personal favorite called, I'll SHIT ON YOU! <laughs> this is another WIP one that was rejected. It was for the quick drop one and I just said, you know what, it just looks funny. It looks more like he's in the air about to take a dump on Alucard. I should put this in the game. Make this something that there's maybe a one in a thousand chance that he'll do this pose and shoot a fireball out of his rear or something. Just something crazy like that that maybe you have to fit, maybe you have to, excuse me, hit a certain set of ridiculous, ridiculous prerequisites to see. I don't know. Maybe. But no, I'm not going to put that shit in. It'd be stupid as hell. Seriously. I've had people come up with ideas like this and I just tell them, you know what, you can honestly suck my dick and tell me it tastes like ice cream with vanilla sprinkles on top. I couldn't care less. Your idea is stupid. It's not happening. Yeah, we're not going to have any of that silliness going on.
And with that, that's all I've got to share today. I anticipated the video being much shorter, but I always say that. I anticipate doing 5 or 10 minutes worth of content, and the next thing I know, it drags on to probably around 30 minutes now. So, uh, subscribe to the Patreon if you want to help support me, or you can do a one-time donation via PayPal. If you're a cheap bastard, er, I mean, <clears throat> if you uh, <clears throat> just can't <clears throat> afford to support me, <clears throat> pardon me, I don't know what got into me there, uh, you can go ahead and join the Facebook group, or you can join the forums. The links will be down below if you want to talk to other like-minded Castlevania fans. The good news is I do not have access to the Facebook group again. Um, I am considering another form of social media, but I'm just not really that motivated to take care of that because we already have YouTube, Facebook, um, the forum, Patreon. I mean, it's really overkill otherwise for something that's still heavily in development, but I do like to share updates with you guys. Um, I was going to make this Patreon only, but again, since it took a little bit to put it out and I was excited about the animations, I really wanted everybody to see something here. I wanted you guys to really have something to sink your teeth in to see the progress, and I really do enjoy knowing that you guys are having a good time checking these videos out. So, with that, that's all I've got to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and make like a rubber ball and bounce the fuck out of here because I've got tons of coding to get to. So, I'll holler at you people real soon. Peace.